Thank you to our sponsors for today's video, Nokian Tires, Amber, and Star Charge. Nokian Tires is a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made-in-USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantires.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Amber. Amber offers a modern extended warranty for your Tesla's battery and more without the burden of long-term contracts or upfront payments. Check out the link in the description below to browse their plan options and get started with a free over-the-air diagnostic check. This video is also brought to you by Star Charge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me and Jordan with a pretty awesome update. Just about a week or two ago, we posted the Rivian Standard LFP, the new battery in the new Generation 2 Rivian R1S and R1T. We posted that charging curve. And charging is something that is so important to us on this channel. It is one of the most important attributes about an electric car, especially for those who road trip or even don't have home charging and have to rely on public DC fast charging having fast charging matters. And in that video, we knew that was the very Gen 1 charging curve of the new LFP standard battery. It's like 92 and a half kilowatt hour usable. And so we just, uh, Rivian got us a truck with the newer software update that pretty dramatically improves the charging performance on an already pretty good charging pack. Like we all said, if that Gen 1 charging curve was Gen 1, then, man, it can only get even better from that because that wasn't terrible. So um, what we're going to do in this video is evaluate the 0 to 100% charging performance of the uh, Rivian LFP battery pack after a recent update. Jordan will walk us through what software the truck was on. We'll go through the charging curve. We'll go through the testing procedures and all of that. Just a quick one looking at the new updated Rivian LFP charging performance. Jordan, we left everyone on the previous software update, which was 2024.19, I think. Yep, sounds about right. And um, that was a 0 to 100% test that our friend Chris did on his newly delivered R1S LFP standard battery pack. Um, and we really logged the voltage range of this battery pack. We looked at the initial charging curve and you can see it really held 200 kilowatts uh, until roughly 30% and then stair stepped its way down. It looks very prototypey to me in charging curves. I really like to see a smooth taper rather than the stair step approach, uh, but this wasn't bad. And Rivian claimed 200 kilowatt peak charging and it looks like we were just there or even slightly above. Um, but again, this is what was delivered from the charger. So going into the battery was probably right around 200 kilowatts. If we look all the way on the left side of this graph, we'll be able to see the data provided uh, by Alpitronic since we did this charging test on a um, Alpitronic Hyper 400. And it started at 225 and we ended at 340. Yep, I believe. so an hour and 15, zero to full. Yep, so an hour 15, zero to full, which is pretty not bad. Um, but we knew when we recorded this pre update charging curve that Rivian was going to issue a software update. And actually part of the reason that I posted this video, um, even though we know that Rivian was going to update their trucks was to try and get the update out faster. Be like, Oh, Holy smokes. Let's show the guys what we're up to. So I hope that little fire under them to get the uh, software update as soon as possible. So um, we delivered, I don't know, just about a hundred kilowatt hours from the charger during this session, something like that. But again, 92.5 usable, and that was our baseline. Jordan, you just borrowed the new Rivian R1S LFP from Rivian. This was our local service center demo car. What did you do for the charging test? Yeah, so this new truck or SUV, I keep calling it a truck because it's a Rivian, but uh, this has the new software, 2024.23.30 as of the time of this recording. And um, yeah, I 
preconditioned on the way to the charger and this lfp battery seems to really like 90 degrees fahrenheit um, on the the battery pack which of course rivian shows you in the screen which is great that's great user data um, although it, it removes that charging temperature when you're actually charging which is kind of silly to me yeah but, but um, i should mention um the nmc packs target 72 degrees on arrival yep. average because that one bat you know one temperature doesn't you know the battery's huge. There's lots of temperatures across the battery, but it's just an average temperature. And then the LFP looks at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which we already knew that the LFP is going to be running warmer at chargers and actually um, warming up most of the time during preconditioning, uh, rather than cooling down, which is what it's doing with the high nickel chemistries. Yeah. So this one got to its preferred temperature, I guess. It stopped preconditioning before I even made it to the charger. Um, plugged right in. Plug and charge worked. Uh, does seem like the handshake time is still about 30 seconds or so. So that hasn't been improved, um, which is a bit disappointing. But And that's actual... handshake time on the Rivian network itself. Yes, that's Rivian hardware on both ends. But the charging time has been improved. So my overall session was actually 60 minutes, actually a hair less than 60 minutes, zero to full. And now on the screen here, we can see the improved charging curve. It's still some stair-steppy notions in there, but a bit smoothed out as well. So maybe less uh, prototypey, as you called it, and a higher peak charging speed. It, it held um, 200 and teens i guess <laughs> um it well, stayed it at 218 right yeah yeah peaked at right about 218 217 and it held 200 for the first couple percent and then dropped to 200 by about 25 percent so that curve between 5 and 25 is where it was popped above 200 and just held there just fine um for anyone curious ambient temperatures were about 75 degrees outside so it wasn't like a sweltering day or anything and this is just one zero to full. This isn't like us trying to optimize yeah. everything. We just preconditioned it baseline zero to full. And it's possible that you can even, you know, when we do these test things, I, we only had one day with the car. But what I would have done, if you can go back to the graph, Jordan, is you can see where it really tapers at about, I don't know, 40% off of 200 yep. kilowatts. What I would have done after this was drain it back to like 38 percent and then see if it tapered or would hold higher power longer um, and, or if it derated due to temperature. These are the things we're not 100% sure on yet. We will learn this battery pack as we charge it more. But from my impression, Rivian has closed watts. But we know that's not true because they were doing 420 amps, I think, before. Now they're doing 500 amps to get yep. it up to that 220, which is awesome to see. And it's actually the fastest charging Rivian on sale in terms of zero to full time. Now, of course, it's the lowest capacity as well. So, you know, you're, they're looking at large and max packs as larger capacity uh, vehicles. But this, this is really good. Now, it's not as good as the Rivian engineers led me to believe. Well, if you remember <laughs> when I did my first, um, you know, super nerd deep tour, I asked if it would hold full power to about 50%. And they said, yeah, somewhere around there, you'd still be doing 200 kilowatts. But I'm not seeing that here because at 50%, it is bang on 150 kilowatts. Uh, Which, yeah, that, that is technically a bit of an improvement over the 125, 130 from before, but still nowhere near 200. And like you said, yeah, there's a couple, even though it's a relatively smoothed outline, there's still a few um, stair steps. And there's a couple troughs um, right about 40%. So it, it cuts off 200 kilowatts at 35%. Right about 40%, there was a little dip. And then it corrected itself. And then but there's like another where, couple of tips. This is where I think maybe temperature got involved. Because yeah. I don't see any any reason from a charging perspective why those dips would need to be there other than something hitting a limit. Which makes me think, okay, when you did the 10% challenge, how high did it charge in that test? It got up to 51%, barely. So. And what was it doing at 50% state of charge? Um, I think it was doing about 147 kilowatts, 146. Okay, and that's starting from 10. So yep. that means that our full curve is is pretty even. Um, I just took a couple screenshots from that, actually. Let me take a look here. Uh, so at 46%, it was doing 148 kilowatts. And at 13%, it was doing 208. Um, yep. And that it actually seems like your 0 to 100, it did even a little bit better than the 10% yeah. challenge. 
Yeah, which is interesting. I mean, the 10% challenge maybe got it too warm. I don't know. Uh, from just driving, and the temperatures did ambient go up a bit. So hard to say. I, I would like to get some more charging sessions in on this just to, like we said, really plot the theoretical max curve, even though it's not necessarily real world because I think with, with Rubens in general, we're seeing some variety in thermal capabilities, but the LFP battery seems to handle thermals better. It's just more yeah. thermal mass. Yeah. I mean, it, it just seems to be the most stable, the one where the cooling plates actually are arranged in a way where it can uh, thermally control the individual cell even better across everything. So there seems to be less gradient temperature. Um, overall, this just seems kind of like the battery to have. Also, you know, Rivian recommends a 100% charge limit on this vehicle. Now, still, it will degrade faster if you leave it at 100%. You know, same care principles apply LFP to high nickel chemistry. Leave them really as low as you can, 30, 50% for storage. But this needs to be full charged to calibrate. So did you notice at all, Jordan, any weird inconsistencies? Because when Chris did his charging test, when he was like at six miles, it just dropped to zero. It was like, I don't know what's going on. Mine seemed to be fine. When I got down to low state of charge for the charging test, it was... Just let me gradually hop down. Grad. It, it was very consistent, it seemed. Um, I did notice, though, an, another difference between our charging tests was that on his charging session, I'll pull that back up here, it really held, um, what is that, about 35 kilowatts all the way through to the end. Um, with mine, it actually did drop down to 40, it held 40 kilowatts through 97% and then dropped to like 20 and then 99% it was doing 3 kilowatts and then finally wrapped up. So it didn't hold to the end. It did a drastic quick taper. And I don't know if that was because um, of the calibration. Because it when it dropped to 3 kilowatts at like 90, at the very end of 98% is when it dropped to single digits. I was like, oh no, I'm going to be here for a while. And then it just finished like at 100%. Like I think the top of the pack was maybe not quite perfectly calibrated. Yeah, and these are the things that you'll get with LFP, just because there's such a small voltage difference uh, between, let's say, 10 and 95%. You really get this flare at the end and this dip right at the bottom of the pack, and that's really the way for the car to know what's going on. But for the meat of that discharge curve, uh, you, you, the car, you know, you're talking such a minute difference in voltage, so it needs that 100% to know, okay, recalibrate, this is full, and then you can use the, you know, the, the performance of the battery pack across the entire discharge range without any worries of it shutting off early or anything like that. So forgive my voice. Um, so you were you were like 59 minutes and a bit from zero to full. That's right. Yep. Definitely improved. That's that's a big improvement, dude. And I think uh, my recommendation for most people is like I drove our, you know, it was a dual standard base car, no options except the color rivian r1s the second generation and we have more videos coming on this one of course that seems like the one to have unless you need to go fast or you know do maybe even a ton of road tripping this this actually um we did a 10 percent challenge with it but actually jordan didn't put the air conditioning on as to how well it did which is even okay maybe we should cut a couple miles off of it we're going to retest it for sure but it beat the old max pack in the 10% challenge. Yeah, it's going to be close as near as makes no difference. I think by the end, we were also kind of software limited to the 80 indicated, which is kind of 79 um, GPS. So there, there's, uh, if we do test it again, I want to try to beat that too, because it really was struggling to get above 80, but uh, okay, all, those yeah, are all well, things we will that test it again. those are all things that won't make much of a difference. It was still pretty, it wasn't quite to our standards, but it's still pretty representative of what it would actually do, which is, impressive that's what i came away with i was like wow was this actually rips uh 91 miles on 15 minutes of charging so just yeah, a few so miles maybe, more than max yeah so maybe it would do like 89 if everything yeah. was the way it should be i mean very close which yeah. the old max pack was like 86 86 yeah very close so in a road trip situation this is actually the best one yeah and it's it's fine and i i did you know 240 something miles on the range test and it's just like it's it's doing well with the numbers um as a as a percentage of epa and all these things like it's holding its own which i think is what people were 
curious about because this is the entry level model. It's the price point that a lot of people are looking to achieve. If you need that three row SUV and don't want to spend the 100K now for tri motor, who knows what it'll be for quad motor? This seems like such a sweet spot. I, I think this is the one most people should go for. So, anyway, that's the new charging performance of the LFP. Um, zero to full is pretty damn good. It holds, you know, 150 kilowatts at 50%, still needs to be improved. I'd like to see it hold 200 kilowatts deeper. Who wouldn't? But really, this is totally livable. Again, an hour, zero to full, just something you can count on is awesome, I think. So um, from my perspective, all good. I like LFP, and I'm really surprised and glad to see 218 kilowatt peak charging. Yeah, it's better than they originally told you at the event, so cool. Well, there you guys go. Thanks for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. Thank you, Jordan, for testing the truck and uh, running the procedures. I'm recovering from being a little bit under the weather. But uh, more videos coming soon, and we'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.